Uh, day two here uh, at uh, Ken Coomer's studio in East Nashville. And uh, yeah, man, I got two of my pride and joys. Prides and joys. Uh, in, fact, that, in fact, that is pride and that is joy. Um, <laughs> my two Martins. Uh, we're going to take a test and see which one sounds purdiest. Uh, but we're tracking, uh, we're tracking some fun ones today. We got uh, drums and bass in the other room, and uh, we're gonna kind of do it all at once. And Jason Summers is curious: uh, Has the process of recording an album changed much since you first started? Yeah, making records has changed a little bit since I started. Um, you know, back when I started, there really wasn't uh, a, Pro Tools wasn't really being used a lot. And Pro Tools is like the industry standard uh, software that people are using to record these days. <clears throat> back when I started making records, people were you know done with tape and analog and moving into the digital thing. But they were they were still using digital tape. Uh, these things called Tascam D88s were this little you know like video mini Hi8 camera video. <laughs> tape that you would put in and and then you had to get a bunch of these <clears throat> units to stack them because there were only eight tracks per one so you'd see stacks of these uh, these things if you were tracking like 32 tracks at a time um, <clears throat> there was a thing called the ADAT which was like a VHS size tape that you put in this machine and that's what you would record to uh, it was crazy for a while uh, until until of course you know software came in and saved the day but uh, you know um, for me personally, it, it, it has gotten easier because I, I know what can be done at which point in the process, you know, like what makes good pre-production, what makes good principal recording, what the editing capabilities are. So if we're doing something and we, you know, instead of thinking, oh, we got to re-record that, well, no, we can kind of take that from the first course and use it in the second course. I know that, you know, you know, you start to you start to work like an editor. Um, uh, but as well, like you, you kind of relinquish your stress and control over the, each piece of the puzzle, knowing that <clears throat> you know the mix engineer is going to do some different things to it. The mastering engineer is going to come in and, and even add another filter to it. Um, it's, it, it. It's a cool process, and you you grow to trust the process over time. Meg Dietz wants to know uh, what do you do when you get stuck during the album cycle, and what helps you move forward. Yeah, getting stuck sucks. You know, you don't, you don't want to get stuck. Um, sometimes, yeah, you can you start to overthink things, and next thing you know, you're just like, eh, do I even like this song anymore? <laughs> um, you know, I I I think that a lot of times, you know, um, just stepping out of the studio, taking a quick walk around the block, or going to get some food, or or uh, you know, uh, just just calling it a day when it's time to call it a day, and go home and. And then, uh, you know, get a good night's sleep, take a nice shower in the morning, come back f and, and get after it again, you know? I've, I've tried a lot of different things over the years, kind of mix things up, try tracking late at night, try tracking early in the morning, just something to break up whatever kind of, you know, routine or groove you might be in that, that brought you to a halt in the first place. Really, you know, it, it, it is all about maintaining momentum and, and uh, you know, I think if you can just keep the morale high and, and you know, spirits high, and, and fun and keep the laughter going, then, you know, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> I get to track Ken Coomer. I'm tracking Ken Coomer play Shaker. Uh, Jonathan and Veronica, I wanna know, um, how long does it take to complete uh, each song? Uh, and how many tracks do you typically lay down for each song? And do you record different versions of each song? Yeah, you kind of work on the songs in layers. So you'll do like bass, drums, and acoustic and vocal maybe all at once, and you'll knock out you know four or five songs that way. And then in the subsequent days, you bring in session players to play on top of each of those. And before you know it, you're looking at your your tote board where you're crossing out each track that each instrument, each track that you want to put on each song. And before you know it, it's full, and you're like, well, let's listen back to that. Did we do add guitar on this? Did we have piano on this? Oh my god, I guess we did. And so yeah, it becomes like. It's done before you know it, sort of, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, some songs, you know, it's just vocal and guitar. And some songs, you've got 12 tracks of drums, you've got five tracks of guitars, you've got 
10 tracks of background vocals uh, and they add up quickly as well so you know uh, depending on what you're going for <clears throat> you know you could have close to 100 tracks on a song uh, or you could have as, as many as one one microphone one guy one guitar you know telling the truth I don't know. But yeah, it's not uncommon to do more than one uh, one version of a song. You know, maybe you have a full band version of a song, and then maybe you'll just do like a stripped down acoustic version. On my record, Rendezvous with the Angels, there were two versions of uh, my song Always. We recorded a full band version, um, and then I just did me and the guitar version. Um, I never finished the full band version. It just seemed a little dramatic and uncool and uh, too far away from the, the the lullaby intention that the song ultimately wound up having with just me and the guitar. So sometimes you got to try things out to realize what you, what's cool and what, what ain't cool. Day three, these guys are getting into some samba. Not samba on my record. Who has samba on their record? Uh, Casey Hansen wants to know, uh, do you detect any clear purpose in the way the album is going to be structured? Uh, like, is there going to be a sense of progression, or are they a string of standalone tracks? I, you know, I, I've always wanted to make, I'm a big fan of concept records, you know, like something that the start and finish, you have this whole theme that you, you, you know, each song speaks to, to some degree. Um, but... <clears throat> you know, realistically, I I think a lot of my favorite records, you know, the songs had had different things going on throughout, and and uh, you know, <clears throat> I start looking at records more like really great uh, playlists, you know, of different different moods and different uh, like a good mixtape, you know, a lot of ups and downs, and then ultimately your caliber of of song and your your voice and how you're singing and what you're singing and then you know the musicians and things that you're bringing to the table it all has a common sound and and it, it's it's at a common caliber uh and you're not bringing in some sort of like digital synth thing and then putting that up against some like americana acoustic guitar thing so uh, yeah, you try to keep it uh, consistent to some degree, but song-wise, yeah, you may have a breakup song followed by a love song followed by a feel-good, you know, anthem. Um, you never really can tell what's gonna make a great record. That's it, you guys. Thank you for yet another wonderful round of questions. I hope my answers were thorough and insightful and that you guys learned a little bit about uh, the album cycle. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously I'll be sharing plenty uh, as, as we move forward. Uh, it's not just about this being in the studio, but, you know, yeah, getting the artwork put together, getting some photos taken, then you get into the whole marketing campaign and timing of singles and the release date and how to, you know, put that out in conjunction with, uh, with, with touring and, and getting out and getting behind these songs for the next six to 18 months it's a it's a long haul and 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 you know once you decide to do it you gotta do it <laughs> so uh i i just say thanks again for being part of my my inspiration my motivation here to to get back on the horse and give it a go and make another uh record to uh enhance y'all's lives so thank you for for all the support i love you guys would be nothing without you and i mean that so take care catch you soon another sold out show